Hey there, I'm Helper Wesley, the creator of Asteroid Dig, Atomic Trail, and recently in and out Night Burglar, a jam game that did pretty well. Alright, let's jump into the devlog. This is another prototype video where I'm working on something that kind of feels cool in my head. After watching the game uh, Unrailed, Unrailed? Untrailed? Unrailed. Unrailed. After watching the game Unrailed, I really wanted to make something similar to that, and I went through a couple things on paper of an airship that you could like jump off the airship and grab resources and then go back to it and things like that. But ultimately I came down to something like the Metro games, where you're uh, in an abandoned ruined subway and your train is trying to get through the subway and you're, while, you're, while the train is puttering through, you're running around grabbing resources and so on. My intention with this game is to have your character run around, grab resources, and then using the light that they have with them, chase off uh, ghosts and things that might come after the train. What those are right now, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they're just going to be ghosts. Maybe more things, but I'm not sure how they, that would work out. While you're doing that, the train itself is going to have a character in it that doesn't leave the train, but you can grab them and move them to different parts of the train to get them to work on different stations. So either repairing or upgrading things, or making new things that you can use as tools, or improving the nav navigation, or things like that. So while you're off doing things, that character is doing one task that you set them to do while you're gone. I started out making the game by doing what I did for Atomic Trail, which was have a revolving uh, scene that's randomized. And Atomic Trail, it was purely cosmetic. This time it was it was the actual layout of the levels so that your character can walk around in, in a randomized area. So I started off with something a little janky and confusing with um, a tiled layer on the bottom that was going to rotate. And this is what happens when you jump in without a plan. You end up taking everything you made, throwing it out, and starting over. I ultimately came up with uh, this, but the problem with this was that the floor tiles, where they're so close together, they're actually touching. When one of them reached the end pink bar, which you'll see there now, uh, the pink bars tell them to go back to the beginning, right? So once one of them reached that, two of them were touching with each other, so the game thought that they were both the same entity, which is annoying. So both of them got zipped to the front of the line and ended up screwing up the whole thing. So as you'll see, a lot of randomization got screwed up really bad, and the levels just didn't make any sense. In an effort to fix that, I went back afterwards and separated the floor tiles and put a covering over those sections, which I actually kind of like because it means that the whole subway has this like structured look to it. So every every so far in the, in the subway, there's the, these covers that are p sort of pillars of the subway. And this worked out pretty well. I ran it in some high speeds to try to figure out where and why it was breaking so that I didn't sit around forever. But when the game runs properly, it's going to run at a very slow pace. So you actually have time to go grab the resources and bring them back to the train. And then I had to create a character for the game and I didn't want it to be something too well animated because the game itself isn't going to be pretty. So the character being this cute little circular head blob type character with no arms and a backpack, to me it looks pretty cute. And I think that'll be what, I'm, what I go with in the end. And using the same style that I created in Atomic Trail, I'm using the black character outlines with the colored background lights. And that way the characters and detail of the, of the scene don't show up unless they're in light because the black coloring behind the object makes it show up as something on the screen. Otherwise they all blend in with the black background. I think later I'll add lights and torches and things uh, that will be flickering on and off to make the whole scene seem just a little more alive. I'm also going to give the train and enemies light sources as well, so they all kind of stand out. Ultimately hoping that it kind of... Uh, hopefully it looks okay. Next I went on to tackle resource spawning, which is kind of important, <laughs> obviously. And that worked out okay, more or less. I caused a whole bunch of trouble for myself by just not making it spawn automatically. I tried to do an RNG thing where it had a certain percent chance of spawning and that was dictated by the object variable of the spawner. So the spawners go through the scene with the level itself, and then when they flip back and start over, that's when they drop their resource. So every round, every time the scene repeats, it drops the resource, and the resource is now, now that I figured it out, 
a uh, one of three random chance that drops, and that'll probably be like wood, stone, and coal or something, uh, since the train is probably going to be steam powered because there's going to be no electricity in this ruined subway. And steam powered would uh, kind of mean that all of the vitals of the ship are all tied to this one thing. So keeping your furnace alive could be a light source, a heat source, and the reason that your train moves at all. So the speed of the scene might be dictated by the amount of fuel that you have. I don't know yet, I'm still spitballing ideas with, with my Discord and it's, it's kind of been fun to, to make. Now that everything is set up though, I have to start making um, some of the actual functions of the game. So picking up objects and bringing them back to the train, the train scene itself, and things like that. Which means there's a lot more work down the line. Hopefully this game's scope is realistic. It doesn't, in my head, seem like it's going to be too big, but it's going to be big enough that people will actually enjoy playing it, hopefully. The idea will be to go a certain distance, stop at a town or like pocket of civilization, and then restock on things and buy and upgrade things. And that'll be the whole game basically until you get to the end. Picking up resources, improving your train, and fighting off enemies, or chasing off enemies I guess, will be basically the core loops of the game. So that's it. As of right now I'm calling it Subway to Hell. That's a working title, it's probably gonna change, but for now that seems pretty suitable since you're fighting off demons and ghosts, and maybe along the way I will slowly, incrementally create a story so that you kind of have a, a clue of what's going on in the world around you. I haven't thought that up yet. Ruin Subway just sounded like a cool idea. Maybe I'll add that in so that every time you stop at a station you get some more lore or backstory as to what's going on. Or maybe I'll do a Duskers style where nobody knows what's going on, and the more information you get, the more confused you get. So now, that, now I'm working on this fireside and finishing off my asteroid dig game, which is basically done. I'm just currently working on the translations with my Discord, thankfully they're helping me out, to translate the language into other languages so that people can play it around the world. Unfortunately the font that I'm using only has Latin characters, so I can't do other languages that have different alphabets without changing the font, and that's just that just sounds like a lot of work to me. A lot more work than, I don't want to say worth it, but a lot more work than I'm willing to put into it. It just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Anyhow, if you enjoyed this devlog, do the whole like, comment, and subscribe thing. That'd be great. If you don't want to, that's cool too. If you want to talk to me personally or just hang out with us in the Discord, the link is down below. It's a pretty cool, cozy place. It's called the Game Dev Fireside. And if you choose to do that and come hang out with us, then I'll see you there.